Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account who says, Esso's 31 female best friend, 30 male, takes every possible chance to bully me, 33 male, in front of my SO. Today, he pulled me aside and said, I'm not good enough for my SO. And the thought of us together discuss him. Me and my SO have been dating since before COVID started. We started dating a few weeks before pandemic stuff happened, so over three years now. We've been super happy together and got a place together at the start of the year. She has a friend. Let's call him John. They have been BFFs since they were kids. He is very openly gay and he is married to his husband. I met John once before the pandemic. He and his husband joined us on our second date. It was only recently that he was actually around and tried to do stuff with us and his husband. Honestly, I never liked John. He has always been someone who demands everyone pays attention to him. If you have an interesting story, he will constantly try to interrupt you and try to tell you his own thing that was always much cooler. If he cannot one-up you, he will immediately try to change the topic or someone calls him out on his bullshit. He has always been somewhat hostile to me to the point where I never really liked it. The last few months, he has pretty much just straight up started bullying me, criticizing everything from my clothes to my appearance to even things I like. The last week, it got super fucking bad. And both me and my SO mentioned we're going on vacation to Japan for a month, something we both wanted to do. John was apparently really hurt by it. Apparently him and my SO talked about that for years, but never did it due to COVID. I tried to be nice and suggested him and his partner could come with us. He told me he would never want to go anywhere and be seen with a loser like me. Okay. Tonight was one of our mutual friend's birthdays and John showed up after being invited by my SO. At one point in the night, he pulled me aside when I went to the bathroom and spent five minutes throwing an insane amount of shade at me. Everything from I am disgusting, I'm garbage. Then he outright told me to break up with my SO or he would do it for me because our relationship disgusts him. I've told my SO multiple times like, hey, can you tell John to call it? I don't like this and I don't want to be around him. John immediately denies everything I say he said. He also only does it when my SO is not present. Tonight, I told her word for word what happened and she just said she doesn't believe me at all. She has known him for a quarter of a century and she has never seen anything like that. So I asked if she thought I was lying. She said I was just embellishing what he was saying and she can tell he's unhappy about our relationship, but that doesn't change anything for her. She loves me and that is that. Honestly, I feel hurt. I feel like she is taking his side always and it just makes me feel like shit. I don't really know if I can continue this relationship. It just feels so stupid. Edit, sorry I just woke up. I'm trying to read everything. Also to clarify something, my reaction is generally to be extremely nice and to just take it on the chin. All of her other friends love me and some of them have mentioned they really dislike John. I need to leave for work, but I'm going to try and talk to her one final time. If that fails, try to record it. Edit two, just before I run for work, Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to give me advice. Thank you. So then there were some comments where Opie gives some additional information as well. So Miss says, and quotes, and she just said she doesn't believe me at all. Then says that's not an appropriate answer. Quotes again saying, she can tell he's unhappy about our relationship, but that doesn't change anything for her. She loves me and that is that. Then says, has she told him this? And quotes again saying, I don't really know if I can continue this relationship. It just feels so stupid. And says, and that's totally understandable. By not acting on this, your partner is worsening the conflict and allowing you to not feel hurt. If she can't trust you on this, why are you in a relationship at all? Opie says, she's made it very abundantly clear that we are a couple multiple times. However, I don't know if those exact words were said to John. Honestly, if it wasn't for the issue, our relationship would basically be perfect which is why this hurts so much. Not really an elf says, just because he doesn't want to shag her doesn't mean he's not jealous that someone is taking up her time. Unless there's something you're not telling us, it sounds like he's annoyed that his bestie is giving time and attention to someone who's not him. Has he ever approved of any of her relationships? Opie says, the only other previous relationship she had prior was an abusive one. He played a big part of getting her out of that relationship, according to her. Also, yeah, I can somewhat see that. 
When I finally moved back recently, apparently he kept going on trying to make plans with my SO almost every single night. And that never happened as she works a fairly stressful job now. The pendant remove says, record him on your phone or get a recorder that can fit in your pocket. Stand up to him. Comments on your clothes. I didn't ask your opinion. Says you're a scum. Well, girlfriend likes me. That's all that matters. That's my advice. Stand up and record. OP says, thanks. I'm going to try and record. I've tried to reply back and have even gotten a few laughs from her friends, but he just tends to get even worse and it becomes a massive annoyance. He acts like a child and it drives me mad. Archangel says, one thing I don't understand. Why have you put up with this for so long? The second time he trash talked you, I would have told him to fuck off. And every subsequent time after that, he tried to talk to you alone, I would have just walked away. Why did you engage? Why don't you talk to John's partner? Tell him what's been happening. Ask him if John is really gay or maybe he's bisexual and has carried a torch for your girlfriend. If he wants to fuck around with your relationship, you can fuck around with his. As for your girlfriend, I don't know. On the one hand, if you break up, John wins. But on the other hand, is there a future in a relationship with your girlfriend does not have your back? The petty and me would get a voice recorder, record him trash talking you, play it back to your girlfriend saying, that's why you should have believed me. We're done. And then walk away and leave them all to sort out their shit. Sorry, I probably haven't been much help. At the least, don't engage with John anymore. Anytime the two of you are left alone, just walk away. Whatever else you decide, good luck. Opie responds saying, generally, I just ignore him when he does it. However, when he threw all that shade at me, he was literally blocking the hallway, preventing me from passing. I'm a small guy. John is a big guy. In quotes, why didn't you talk to John's partner? And says, his partner is frankly just as bad as he is. Even worse in some regards. All he ever does is put down people. Any comment you say to him, he treats it as a slight. Apparently, he was livid that my SO apparently made a suggestion for the look of their new place. My SO and him don't really get along. Going to try and record him. And I gotta admit, the petty in me was coming out on this story and I felt very much like Archangel in this one. I feel like the relationship is done, but I wouldn't want to leave it with John winning, if you know what I mean. I would still want the proof to be out there that he is doing all this shady stuff behind the girlfriend's back just so she knows what he's like it might be better to just leave the relationship and be done with it but the petty in me is coming out on this one but op does update the story and says i got a lot of good advice so thank you all unfortunately it does not have a good ending i tried to talk to my so i sat down with her and tried to have a serious conversation with her I got him to stupidly rant about how much he thinks I am garbage over WhatsApp. He's apparently not racist, but his reasoning is, I am nowhere near attractive enough apparently for her. I am batting way above my league. The only reason she is with me is pity. My career as software developer contributes absolutely nothing to mankind. It gives me a better than everyone attitude. I am painfully boring and just being around him makes him want to assault me physically. My voice is unbearably grating on him. I made a few comments about explaining how petty that sounds and he lost it over WhatsApp. I even got some of her own friends to comment and say they don't like to be around John. One of her friends ranted to me about how John's saying he tried to make her destination wedding about him and his husband. Today, I sat down with her, explained how I felt and showed her the conversation and the comments. I went with the angle of, I don't want you to cut your best friend out of your life. I just don't want to be around this person at all, thinking it would be diplomatic. She took it very poorly and accused me of being manipulative by egging him on in the conversation. I said, what is your problem with me? She said, I'm being extremely manipulative and I'm doing what her ex tried to do by controlling who she can be friends with. She told me she didn't want to be around me and need space and has decided to go stay with some family while she sorts out her feelings. This evening, she messaged me and said our relationship is over and she will collect her stuff when she calms down. She doesn't want to discuss it as it is her final decision. I'm in shock right now, on top of that it seems like she's cut ties with a bunch of her friends who supported me. I don't understand her reaction at all and I just feel devastated. Part of me just wishes I kept my mouth shut but I just cannot take being bullied and it being ignored by someone who is supposed to love me. I feel lost and hurt I guess. So sorry, but thank you for all the nice comments. Definitely saying Gary replies that and says, honestly, man, you're probably better off. The whole situation sounds toxic and you'll find someone who won't think it's normal for her friends to make you feel like shit. She clearly has mental issues. OP says, 
This is what most of her friends have been telling me. It just really sucks. Everything aside from him was fantastic in my eyes. I don't know. And there was a lot of comments asking about the girlfriend's previous relationship and was that really abusive? And I think in this one, although it's really sad for OP right now, and of course it's going to hurt, it's one of those situations where the, the saying comes out, I think you dodged a bullet here. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from Throwaway Dad who says, am I the a-hole for scolding the monster under my daughter's bed? My wife, 54 female and I, 40 male, are the proud parents of Mary, 4 female. Like most little kids, Mary is a little scared of the dark and believes there might be a monster under her bed. Whenever Mary has a nightmare, she makes her way from her room to ours. Quietly wakes either me or my wife and says the monster gave her bad dreams. I then walk Mary back to her room, tuck her in again and reassure her that the monster can't hurt her. Just to prove it, I lean down to peek under the bed and scold the monster for scaring her. My wife thinks it's sweet and Mary feels safer. Last weekend, my in-laws were in town and staying with us in the guest bedroom, next to Mary's. Mary had a nightmare and we did our typical pattern described above. Apparently, my father-in-law, 75 male, heard me scolding the monster and stopped me in the hall as I was heading back to bed. He told me Mary needs to learn monsters are not real and it's time Mary learned how to fight her own bad dreams. I was angry, marched past father-in-law and told my wife what he had said. The next morning before Mary got up, I told my father-in-law he had no right to tell me how to raise my daughter and my wife backed me up, saying mother-in-law had done the same for her as a kid. Father-in-law thinks we're overreacting, but I disagree. Am I the a-hole? Absolutely, father-in-law needs to mind their own bloody business in this situation. Kid is four years old. You tell them there's not a monster under their bed, they're not going to believe you. Hell, I still won't hang my foot over the side of the bed now. <laughs> But UTC says, not the a-hole, Mary is four. She's allowed to ask her parents for protection against monsters and her parents are allowed to come up with sweet ways to make her feel safe. Father-in-law had no reason to say anything. By the way, how you're dealing with the monsters sounds really sweet. I might steal this idea when my little one gets to that age. Voyager says, not the a-hole. Any parent knows that you enter into a child's fantasies if you want to get anywhere with them. There's a wonderful line in a book about how a particular nanny used to beat the under the bed monsters with a fireplace poker. She could not convince the children not to believe in the monsters. The monsters were there. She could, however, get them to believe in the poker. When my kids were little, I collected every scary looking stuffed animal I could find, from tigers and lobsters to catholoid shoggoths. They were the stuffy army and their job was to protect my kids from the monsters as soon as they got old enough to start worrying about monsters. We set them about the room before bedtime so they'd be on watch. Worked a treat. No monsters ever bothered my kids at night. You are a parent and it sounds like you are a good one. You know what's best for your kid. Don't let your father-in-law talk you out of it. Balam says, not the a-hole. You're being an awesome parent. Also in quotes, it's time Mary learned how to fight her own bad dreams. And then says, she's four. We're expecting four-year-olds to be emotionally mature enough to figure out that nightmares are a natural thing. No. Coddle the kid and make her feel safe in her own damn bedroom. Throne Magician says, I'm sorry to say, I think the monster under the bed got to your father-in-law and now they're working together to try and keep you from keeping Mary safe from the monster. You most definitely are not the a-hole and you sound like a great dad. Keep doing what you do and ignore all others. Your father-in-law sounds like an idiot. So then OP comes in with an update and says, update to my am I the a-hole post. Well, the judgment on my am I the asshole post has made it clear that the answer is not the asshole. However, as my name suggests, this is a throwaway account. So first and foremost, I have something I'd like to say. Hi everyone, I'm Mary from The Story. Let me explain. My family just lost my grandfather's brother, my great uncle. And after losing his own dad last year, my father has begun to realize how little time he might have left with our older loved ones. On their way back from my great uncle's funeral, my parents called me just to talk. I'm at college and really busy with schoolwork this time of year. Big papers and tests suck, so I couldn't go. After a bit, my dad asked my mum if we remembered when he'd scolded the monsters and the story was brought up. He felt like, even though it's been 16 years, he should apologize to my grandpa for yelling at him back then, while he still has time. 
Mum and I told him that was sweet but stupid and told him I'd prove he'd been being a good parent. All he had to do was tell me what to write. I made a throwaway account and wrote what he told me. Fact checking with my mum. However, none of us knew how upset people would get about the monster that once lived under my bed and my grandpa's reaction. Y'all, I don't even know how to thank you for all the kind words you gave. My dad and I have read every single comment and he feels a lot more confident having made the decisions he did. Thank you so much. I really appreciated the kindness you have all shown my dad through his story and would especially like to thank users, really nice ogre, throw magician, response mountain and USMC airwinger and many others for their hilarious comments about my grandpa and how to keep him in check. It reminded my dad of how my mum keeps grandpa in check and had him, my dad, belly laughing. I'd also like to thank everyone who recommended a book called Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. My dad and I are each planning to pick up a copy. And to everyone who mentioned it, yes, Monster Spray works wonders. I use it for the kids I babysit, and they love it. To those of you who suggested my dad made my fear of the monster worse, wrong. Believe me when I say he tried the it's okay, monsters aren't real, bad dreams happened approach. That failed miserably. I was actually the one who made him start scolding the monsters, and after a few times, it just became part of the pattern. I have very fond memories of my dad in shining, slipper-footed armor. And to the gross creeps who only focused on my parents' age gap, please shut up and kindly F off. You people are disgusting. They've been together for 32 years this July, married for 26 this September. They're just as in love as always and perfectly happy. End of discussion. Thanks again, Reddit. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And this next story comes from Architecture Hater who says, Am I the a-hole for telling my 28 fiance, 29, that I could not rely on her in a life or death situation? I have what I think is a very good sense of situational awareness. I'm a quick thinker and I tend not to panic in dangerous situations. My fiance, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. If I'm being nice, I would say she doesn't have any awareness of danger. If I'm being honest, I would say that she has the survival instinct of a panda raised in captivity. She has no sense of danger around her, doesn't constantly examine her surroundings for things that could be dangerous. And when things are bad, her reaction is to panic and scream. Friday, we went out on a friend of mine's boat and we got into a dangerous situation. We were anticipating light rain, but we ended up with a downpour, high winds and high waves. While me and the other men there were trying to strap things down and keep the boat from capsizing, my fiance screamed and cried for dear life. She was in hysterics. and I get it was a scary situation, but her yelling and screaming that we're all going to die and for God to save us and literally crying saying that it's my fault that she's on the boat since I asked her to come with. None of the other girlfriends or wives were doing this, just her. I'm sure the other women there were just as scared, but tried to keep it in for the sake of the men doing something about it. The downpour was really bad for about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes of waiting while we were doing everything we can to keep things all right. We made it back safe with little more damage than a few spilled white claws. On the car ride home, I told fiance that we needed to talk about how she was behaving during the crisis. Not only was it incredibly embarrassing in front of my boys, but it was distracting, unhelpful, and telling. I told her that today proved to me that if I was in a life or death situation, I could not rely on her to be any help or do anything except make things more stressful. I said she needed to learn how to not panic and be helpful. She got unbelievably mad. She said she thought she was going to die and had reason to freak out. I told her that all of us were scared, but none of us were as ridiculous as she was. We argued the entire ride home and she's still pissed off at me. I think I was right to say this, especially since we plan on spending our lives together and raising a family. I can't be the only level-headed one. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Oh my fucking God. The women there did not help because they did not know how to help. The men there have been out together on the boat countless times before, so we're all experienced and know exactly what to do so much more unsafe for them to be in our way attempting to help if they don't really know what they are doing. It's safer for everyone if they just hang on and keep calm until the issue is resolved. This has nothing to do with them being women. It has everything to do with them not knowing what to do. If another guy had been there and didn't know what to do, I'd tell him to sit tight and let those of us that do know handle it. 
Georgia Light says not the a-hole. She can feel and react however she pleases, but that doesn't change the facts. So you are correct. She was unhelpful and only made an already scary situation even more stressful. It's indeed a very useful skill to have, to be able to think somewhat straight in a crisis situation, or at the very least, have the sense to not make it worse for those who are trying to help. GTE says, not sure if you handled the delivery well, but it's a fair concern. If you have children, she cannot freak out every time she is scared. Unfortunately, she probably learned this from her parents and well would pass it on. Not the a-hole, though the delivery sounds flawed, would work on that. There's probably an apology needed there. You may need counseling on this, but ultimately, it probably will never change. You just need to decide if it impacts your long-term plans. Justin is funny says everyone sucks here. Despite the fact that this sounds like a scene out of a movie, not particularly real, here goes. One, she's a very, very soft a-hole for creating more chaos, confusion, and fear in a bad situation. But some people aren't emotionally strong, so that is what it is. Two, you're an a-hole for admonishing her for that. You seem to be into traditional gender roles, which is fine. The men take care of the action while the women are cowering in fear. Again, pretty movie-ish given that most of the women I know have been helping make sure we avoid disaster and some of the men I know would be paralyzed with fear. But if this is your style, then you should have been more comforting her after a traumatic experience, not shitting on her for playing her role. Three, you're absolutely right. You can't depend on her in an emergency, but the car ride after a life or death scenario wasn't the time to bring that up. And one more comment from Consistent Annual who says, what exactly was your aim with this discussion? Because it sounds to me like you wanted to put your fiance in her place rather than talk about her traumatic experience and try to understand what happened with her so that you could help her manage her stress response better next time. Face it, you were absolutely not trying to help her at all bringing this up with her in the way you did. You were not solutions focused. You wanted to assign blame and guilt. Think about one thing though. You're not even helping yourself by doing this because now you've only put extra doubt in your fiancé's mind the next time any situation comes up. You're the a-hole to your fiancé and to yourself in the long run. I'm not even touching the misogynistic overtones in your post. Other commenters will cover that better. Brace yourself to get absolutely clobbered by am I the a-hole on this one. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being involved. Absolutely incredible. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.